All right, well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto, and I am here to give you guys a little uh, heritage-filled review, actually, because this is the 2008 BMW M3, and who do we have to thank for this little opportunity? Well, it is none other than Anchor Auto Outlet in Cary, Raleigh, North Carolina. So, if you're interested in picking up this bad boy for, like, 19 grand or whatever, please do so, but please take advantage of their warranty on pretty much any of their cars. So... Whether you buy a Bentley, a Ferrari from them, which, yes, they did have at one point, please take advantage of their warranty because it's just, it's just better that way. Let's just put it that way, you know. So, you know, a lot of the nonsense that you hear, you know, it can be completely avoided if you just get a warranty. I mean, yes, granted, these M3s are pretty solid vehicles, uh, rod bearings, and you're pretty much good to go, supposedly. So, you know, there's, there's a few more things than that. But, you know, again, please, I can't stretch this enough to you, a warranty. Please take advantage of that. It's a primary reason why I even come to this dealership in the first place because you can own this vehicle that's been heavily depreciated. What are these things going for like, what, 80 grand with some options? Convertible like this, white, red interior. Yeah, okay. So we have that established. Please keep that in mind. Now, onto the review. Let's first of all, let me just start out with the looks of this thing. Growing up, I was a massive BMW freak. This was my actually my most favorite car ever. This is actually, to be honest, I'm actually driving my dream car right now. I mean, my actual dream car is sitting right next to me. It's the LC500. But I'm just saying, though, at the time, this was a big deal for me. This was such a special car. Every, like, angle of this car looks perfect. There's not a bad angle on this thing. And this thing has aged so gracefully. This is the best aging car out on the road. It's just so clean, man. I appreciate this design so much. I, I originally liked the E46 M3 because it was like that, what, that Need for Speed Most Wanted car or whatever. It's like that cover car. Well, this one came out. This was just so much nicer to me to look at. So here we are. A few years later, now I'm driving the thing. So let's just get started with this little review. This is, in fact, the uh, the six-speed manual. So it's the one that you want, of course, and it is the convertible. So we'll talk more about that in a bit. The truth be told, I actually just finished driving this car. I'm actually done driving it, actually. Um, you're about to see when I go through, edit the video, I'm going to go through, place the clips of me actually driving the vehicle. So why did I not comment through the actual driving of the vehicle? Well, I ran into a few technical difficulties. First of which is actually, I'm not really blaming the car here, but it's actually like this gear lever, uh, this old knob right here. It comes off very easily. And I don't know what it takes to actually, you know, screw this thing on properly, but every time I went into second gear, the thing would just like pop out on me. Again, I'm not blaming the car, but it was just a little difficult to drive the car the way I needed to, to make a proper review for you guys with the thing always like popping and jumping out. Now, granted, when I actually started moving, it actually got a little bit better. It wasn't an issue. It didn't really pop out on me afterwards, so that's pretty good, but I was a little bit more gentle with it. Okay, the second reason why I didn't uh, comment through it. I pretty much, I, I drive through Washington, D.C. pretty much, like the heart of it, like the um, the city part of it, like downtown D.C., that's pretty much where I drive these vehicles. So a lot of idiots out today, and I guess self-quarantining and uh, social distancing, none of these things matter anymore. Uh, it's all, not only is it back to normal, it's like at a whole nother peak now, essentially. So all 7 billion humans on this planet are all now where I pretty much do my car reviews. So that was a little bit frustrating, but when I got the chance, of course, I, I drove it accordingly. I had a good amount of uh, time with the vehicle, so I'm not really tripping over it. Enough for me to pretty much give you a in-depth review now, sitting here, while I put some B-roll over this. While I was driving this vehicle, the thing that kept popping into my mind was just how much I disliked the BMW M240i, a car that a lot of people covet and they, you know, jerk it off and all this stuff. I hated that car because it rode like trash. It didn't really feel that special a drive. This car, I liked it a lot, lot more. Now, is this my most favorite car in the world? It's, it's very good, but it's not my favorite in the world or anything like that, but it is truly a great machine to drive. Far better than the kind of newer M products because Honestly, like the newer M products, they feel very artificial, very fake. It doesn't feel right, honestly. This feels far more natural, both the steering, just the brakes. This manual transmission, you know, aside from the little issue I had, is actually pretty damn perfect, actually. The clutch uptake is phenomenal, you know, throwing in all the gears, very simple to drive. You know, it's very predictable, everything about this car. The only thing I didn't like was actually the second gear. Uh, it was rather long for whatever reason. You know, like, I mean the actual throw itself because all the other gears are very kind of like short throws, if you will. Uh, just very perfect, actually. But the second gear for what, and also, you know, the, the knob keeps coming off. So that kind of, you know, made me lose some confidence in the thing. So uh, I, I wasn't quite as like, you know, direct with it. But however, 
that was the only thing I noticed. Otherwise, this, this is actually like pretty damn perfect as a manual transmission goes. I have no real issues there. Obviously, a manual handbrake, of course. The steering was great, dude. I mean, no issues there whatsoever. Really phenomenal stuff there. I like the girth of it. Nice, thick steering wheel, of course. Now, there is like the DCT, the dual clutch, the SMGs, and all that stuff. This is, of course, the transmission that you want. It's going to be the least problematic as well. So, it's just great to own this car with the warranty. And if you do the raw bearings, it's just great at that point. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I appreciate that. Appreciate the steering. Far more natural feeling than the newer BMWs. That's for damn sure. Not even remotely an issue there. Of course, you can turn off the trash control off. And you have the power button here, which, you know, just helps you. Makes the throttle response a little bit more immediate. And speaking of throttle, you know, this car, you know, it's double Vanos, all that good stuff. It has like a butterfly thing for each cylinder, essentially. So there's eight like little butterfly valve things. And it makes the throttle very kind of immediate supposedly but it doesn't feel that way it actually feels extremely natural it feels pretty much perfect actually the seating position in this thing is perfect this actually feels like a coupe unlike the little two series thing that i drove that just felt like a three series to drive now this is the m3 i get that but this actually feels completely different to drive because the driving seating position is actually low but it's not like difficult to get in and out of that's the thing i like about it kind of like low slide. it's like the perfect kind of size all that stuff is very pretty it's like almost like a Porsche 911 where everything just kind of adds up perfectly, you know, driving position, the actual physical size of the car, everything's great about it. Now, a lot of BMW freaks are like, oh, this is not the real M3 or whatever because it's a convertible top. Now I get that this thing does weigh like 4,100 pounds, 4,200 pounds, something like that. And the thing is like, the coupes and the sedans are like about 3,700 pounds. So I get it, it's about 500 pounds more. Uh, and this is pretty much like the first year of it. Now granted, let me tell you something. When you take the top off in a car, it completely transforms the vehicle. I mean, it's not even the same car anymore. And I'll get to that in a bit. But when I'm driving this car, honestly, this feels just fine. I mean, BMW, they put a lot of work into this vehicle. You know, the M3 of this generation, you know, this is when they're very much into like F1 racing and all that good stuff. And th there is a large amount of aluminum being used with this vehicle, you know, to make this chassis as rigid as possible it's got nothing to do with the regular three series pretty much at this point other than like the doors i think which the doors are actually very light it's not like super heavy for a coupe actually so that's that's pretty good i do appreciate that but yes there's obviously there's a ton of aluminum being used in the suspension components the entire like multi-link apparently like all the arms and stuff they're all like you know uh, aluminum pieces of course this v8 engine you know this is the highlight of this car this is really what you're here to you know pretty much talk about essentially with this car right this four liter v8 it's not like your traditional V8. This is a very just um, well-engineered. It reminds me of the LC500. It's not quite as charismatic as the uh, LC500 V8, but it's still a very special V8. It's not like driving a Camaro or like a Challenger V8. It's not like that kind of brawny feeling type. This thing revs out to like 8,400 RPM. It produces like 414 horsepower and a seemingly abysmal sounding 295 pounds feet of torque. So let me explain those figures to you here in a bit. BMW at this point, you know, the M3 is still a very pragmatic vehicle for them. A, a daily driver, if you will, and they understood that. That's why they created this convertible experience because people want to enjoy this thing out on the road. And the power figures of this thing, it is perfectly calibrated to have fun out on the street. This is a great fun driving car out on just daily roads with speed limits. That's the beauty of this car. You can, especially with the manual, you can rev this thing out. It's wonderful, you know, it reminds me a lot of the LC500, except, you know, this is obviously not as expensive as an LC, even during the time, of course. It's still a remarkable experience to drive this car, you know, it, there's a lot to this car, you know, driving-wise, you know, the chassis and all that good stuff, the steering, it just feels natural, feels good, and let me tell you the other thing, the ride quality of this thing is great. I, this is far better riding than what I expected this thing to be. I was very scared when I drove like the uh, M240i. I thought maybe this would kind of ride like trash too, but it doesn't. This is totally acceptable. Sure, it can feel a little jittery, but that's just the car telling you like what's going on with the road. It's a very communicative car, very predictable to drive this thing. You're not going to like, you know, fling this thing into a tree. You can easily drive this car, you know, trash control off, all that good stuff. It's like you get a good sense of what's going on with this car. Again, it's not like my most favorite car I've ever driven or anything like that, but it's just like, this is a great, if you're a BMW freak, I think this is the M car to go with, especially in the used market. You know, again, I keep telling you guys this because I don't want you guys to be bent over or anything like that. You buy this, this is not like the M5 and the M6 with the V10. This is actually a little bit more reliable than that. No, it's not perfect, but if you got a warranty with this, this is something that like a normal human being can actually like, afford to own, especially like with this type of mileage and like costing less than 20 grand. 
this is definitely the way I would go with buying this vehicle. And honestly, this thing is going to keep its value because this is this doesn't exist anymore. You know what I'm saying? With the new M3, it's already like an inline six turbo thing. They're never going to bring this back, essentially. So just keep that in mind about these vehicles. And this particular one has a stick, of course, which again, that's the only way I would ever get this vehicle. So yes, driving wise, this is a great kind of like daily driver, like a great city car. You know what I'm saying? Like BMW didn't like screw this one up. This is a good driving vehicle, aged and held up extremely well. So I really do appreciate this machine. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about this interior a little bit. Now, while I was driving this car, there wasn't a crazy amount of like creaks and rattles with this thing. Again, it wasn't perfect. However, it didn't feel like completely raggedy and like a tin can or anything like that. It still felt like a nice, you know, solid machine. No, it did not age like a Lexus or anything like that, but this is still great for most people. I think a little bit of TLC, and I think you can really start to appreciate this thing. So, because this interior is actually pretty damn solid, actually, this kind of old school BMW, it's a little bit more solid in here. Let's just put it that way. You know, it's 100,000 miles in, it's uh, impressing me pretty well, actually. A few little things I noticed, you know, like one of the speakers is blown out, you know, when the thing kept chiming at me or whatever. So, there was that. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, you know, screw, screw the sound system in this thing because this V8, the exhaust, it's actually pretty loud, actually. Um, especially from the outside. This thing is a screamer, so I do appreciate that. When you have the top down of this thing, it's just like the full experience with it. So I do like that. But yes, this interior is solid. Everything is working in here. No stupid lights or whatever. Every All the electronics still work. I love the gauge cluster in this thing. Very simple to read. Nice little like center display thing. Shows you some good information there. Everything's in Celsius or whatever with this car. I don't know why, but maybe I'm sure you can change that in the menus. The seats are so damn comfortable and they actually age extremely well too. It's like this nice red interior you know what I'm saying so it's like that perfect kind of spec you know white with the red interior it looks like a brand new car from the outside and honestly even that even in the inside it's aged extremely well so I do appreciate it all the wood trimmings you know it's not like all you know, you know what I'm saying it's not like all splintered out or whatever it's like again it's held up beautifully the key system is quite interesting you actually have to put the key in there like the whole fob and then you have the push button start so that's cool you have automatic headlights i really appreciate that you have one touch up and down windows for the front two windows here however like the rear kind of quarter windows you actually had to like roll them up yourself so there is that but it's like a fishbowl in here very easy to see out of you know again just that great kind of daily driver if you will perfect seating position like i mentioned before nice cool ac of course it's completely separated from the screen your temperature your fan speed everything love it has a stupid infotainment here. Yes, it's very difficult to use, but hey, I think if you own the car, you can get used to it. Not a whole lot of storage space in here. You know, door pocket's not entirely huge. So our armrest, I mean, again, it's a little bit compromised, kind of like the LC500, but it's okay. Actually a decent amount of space in the rear seats, actually. You might even actually be able to fit humans back there. You know, who would've thought? And, uh, you know, that's kind of, again, some of the more practical aspects of this car. I didn't try sitting back there, but you do have HVAC back there as well. Uh, so that's pretty nice. The trunk space isn't completely ridiculous. You know, I drove like a Maserati Gran Turismo here as well, a convertible. And the, the, the trunk space was non-existent. But with this car, it exists. You can easily put golf clubs back there and you can actually fold down the seats and actually put longer items, golf clubs, whatever. You can just slide that stuff through there. So that's fantastic. I love that. Top, of course, you know, this is a, a hard top which i absolutely love you know i love hard top convertibles the most i'm glad it's not like some rag top thing so it's metal it's actually reasonably quiet in here so that's all good solid car man i really do appreciate this vehicle i liked it far more than i thought i would actually this was a dream car for me when i was growing up this is one of my most favorite cars and it actually still is you know for everything that's got going on you know the v8 the manual the the looks of this thing like the the timeless looks you can park this next to a new m3 and not look out of place or out of date you know what i'm saying so phenomenal car again <laughs> keep saying this to you guys please get a warranty with this thing that's the number one thing i can i can tell you guys with this thing but otherwise it's a great car enjoy the motor enjoy the manual enjoy this interior of course with this with this red it's a very nice spec that they have here at Ancarado outlet all their information is going to be in the description box below and also i do apologize for this style of video for this particular specialty car uh it's just it is what it is might have to find a different road or whatever to drive on but we'll see about that but i pushed it enough i got a good feel for it i appreciate it and i think you will too so thank you again for watching this video take care and goodbye